Hi guys, you're back here with Barry, uh, April 29th, and we're working on day 47 of the lockdown in the States, and we're working on uh, day 41 in the DR. We're always a little bit behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, a little bit more serious note here. Um, again, a big thanks goes out to the folks uh, sending us in emails with articles, sending us in video clips, sending us in boots on the ground clips. We really appreciate it. I guess we're getting to be a better source of information. However, though, I'm going to, uh, together, uh, watch with you, uh, uh, of all people, Fox News and Tucker Carlson. That's a class act. Anyway, uh, we're going to watch here the first eight and a half minutes of it. I'm going to be quiet, let it run through, and then make up a few points. But uh, there's a reason why I'm stopping it on the 838 mark, okay? So let's watch together. Good old Tucker Carlson. Watch the 180. Watch the 180 from six weeks ago when the mentors were telling you everything that he is now starting to expose. And now every other mainstream's jumping on it, which is why you guys are always going to be wrong who follow mainstream. And you guys are leading yourselves. You already lost it all. I'd say 80% of it. Let them take the balance of the 20. Good Let's evening. watch. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Last night on this show, we played you a clip from a nearly hour-long video produced by two physicians in California, doctors Dan Erickson and Artin Masihi. Likely many of you had already seen it. That video has had more than 5 million views on YouTube. In their presentation, the two doctors presented a flurry of data pointing to what we are currently learning about this virus and how it spreads. They recited pages of government statistics and then interpreted them in light of their own long clinical experience as doctors. At one point, they noted that the newly adjusted death rate in their state of California, which is much lower than anyone expected it to be, and they asked if government officials there should change their policies based on this new science. Watch. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? So whatever your view of the mass quarantines, and maybe you're enthusiastically for them, the questions you just heard are valid questions. In fact, they're critical questions. We should all be asking those questions, including and especially our policymakers. But as Dr. Erickson pointed out later in the video, dissent of any kind is no longer tolerated in this country. Fact-based honesty, which is the soul of science, is under attack, even in hospitals. Dr. Erickson described physicians being pressured to classify illnesses and deaths as related to coronavirus, whether they believe that to be true or not. We aren't pressured to test for flu, but ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting, when I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. So, so what you just heard, what Dr. Erickson described, is called lying. And lying has no place in science ever. It's scary to think it takes place on a large scale in hospitals. He says it does. Viewers of Erickson's video were shocked and transfixed by this. They forwarded the video to friends who forwarded it on to their friends. And suddenly, millions of people who have spent the last six weeks on a diet of Tiger King and Internet memes were watching sober-minded medical researchers reading from charts of statistics. It's hard to recall a science video taking off like this one did. Not everyone was impressed by it. Some criticized the doctor's policy conclusions. And of course, that's fair. Decent people have different opinions. We're not entirely certain what the perfect response to this pandemic is. Nobody is certain. There's no objective answer at the moment. At best, we can plod along with open minds and good faith. More informed debate is exactly what we need to make wise decisions going forward. Unfortunately for all of us, informed debate is exactly what the authorities don't want. They want unquestioned obedience, so they're cracking down on free expression. Last night, the doctor's video, the one you just saw, was pulled off of YouTube, the largest video hosting site in the world. It wasn't an accident. YouTube admitted doing it. 
The company cited a violation of, quote, community guidelines, and they did not apologize. Looking back when all of this is finally over, and it will be, it's likely we'll see this moment, what YouTube just did, as a turning point in the way we live in this country, a sharp break with 250 years of law and custom. The Two Doctors video was produced by a local television channel in California. It was, in effect, a mainstream news story. The video was not pornographic. It didn't violate copyright or incite violence or commit libel. It didn't break any law. The only justification for taking it down was that the two physicians on screen had reached different conclusions from the people currently in charge. It was a form of dissent from orthodoxy. YouTube and its parent company, Google, have now officially banned dissent. The CEO of YouTube admitted that openly. But then we also talk about um, removing information that is problematic. You know, of course, anything that is medically unsubstantiated, so people saying, like, take vitamin C, um, you know, um, take turmeric, like, those are all will cure you. Um, those are the examples of things that would be a violation of our policy. Um, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations would be a violation of our policy. And so remove is another really important part of our policy. So you're not just putting the truth next to the lie. You're taking the lie down. That's a pretty aggressive approach. We're removing, quote, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations. It'll now be taken off the Internet. Consider that for a minute. As a matter just of science, it's ludicrous. Like everyone else involved in global pandemic policy, the WHO has often been wrong in its recommendations. A lot of people have. In mid-January, WHO told us that coronavirus could not spread from person to person. In March, they told us that face masks didn't work. Those were lies, and they were welcome on Google's platforms. Doctors who are actually treating patients with the virus, meanwhile, have just been banned. So no, this is not about science. Censorship never is about science. It's about power. Big technology companies are using this tragedy to increase their power over the American population. They're working in concert with politicians in order to do it. Just today, Facebook removed an events page for a political protest in Michigan. Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who runs that state, was no doubt pleased to see it. Grossly mismanaging an entire state is a lot easier when citizens are not allowed to complain about it, and now they're not. Last week, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg explained that protests like these are no longer protected political speech. They're, quote, misinformation. How do you deal with the fact that Facebook is now being used to, to organize a lot of these protests to defy social distancing, defy the social distancing guidelines in states? Is somebody trying to organize something like that, does that qualify as harmful information? We do classify that as harmful misinformation, and we take that down. Harmful misinformation. That is a phrase familiar to anyone who has watched totalitarian regimes in any country. It's now how Mark Zuckerberg describes political opinions he doesn't like. Our free press exists to push back against obvious abuses of power like this one. It's the reason we have a First Amendment. It's the only reason we have a First Amendment. But suddenly our media are not concerned about freedom of speech. Reporters applaud our overlords as they punish us for disagreeing. You just saw it in that clip from CNN. That happens every day. Our media are no longer challenging power. They are colluding with power. And that may be why there's been so little critical coverage of the massive expansion of our surveillance state currently in progress. In the name of fighting the coronavirus, tech companies are now following you through your cell phone. They're watching you from above with drones. Those sound like paranoid fantasies. They are not. It's happening as we speak. Needless to say, our politicians approve of this. How do you feel about the drones? Look, uh, at this point, we, we need to save lives, and it's really important that in public spaces, people are abiding by the directives. Yeah, we've got to do it. So what do we have here? We have big companies partnering with the government to spy on you without your knowledge. Americans locked in their homes, banned from going to church, placated with sedatives like weed and beer. Anyone who speaks up is silenced. Political demonstrations are illegal. Organizers are arrested. Only opinions approved by leaders, many of them unelected, are allowed on information platforms. Does that sound familiar? It sounds a lot like China. Of all the many ironies of this moment, so many of them bitter, the hardest to swallow is this one. As we fight this virus, we are becoming far more like the country that spawned it. 
We are becoming more like China. It's horrifying. And it tells Okay, guys, I'm going to stop it there. That's the point I wanted to bring out. Okay, so let us let me ask a few simple questions here, make a few statements. Uh, let me ask you why. So, to, you know, a, a question to all the, all the mainstreams. You see, the mentors have been reporting this whole thing was unnecessary, what, since I would say about a week after the beginning of it, because it took us that long to figure it out. We had to do some research. So my question to, to all these great guys, you know, these talking heads like Tucker and the rest of these people, so where does your responsibility lie? How can all of you have promoted locking down the entire economy seven weeks, six weeks ago, rather? You guys were all on bandstands about, you know, social distancing, this, that, everything now you're talking against. Everything now that you're manipulating and shifting it onto someone else's foot uh, by the name of China. So let's ask that question first off. Where's your responsibility as professional news sources? Your stations have been pumping up this propaganda to the max. And as far as I'm concerned, you're all just a, you're just another one of the main talking heads that are overpaid. Look, the 312 mark, at best we can do is prod along open minds with good faith, you know, good faith to tyrannical sources such as yourself is nothing more than gullibility, good faith, please. So listen, this is what the mentors have been kind of, re we revealed this almost a week after this lockdown started. Now, the people that that understand mainstream sources like this. They've done a complete 180 shift now. And the most important thing I wanted to bring out to you, they talk about lying, lying. Their whole business is based on lying. At the 836 mark, the truth came out, okay? Like Zuckerberg's words there, truth is now labeled harmful misinformation. The only point of real information in this whole head fake was at the 834 mark when you brought out China's name. Because China, as bad as things are all around the world, the shift is heading that way. And over the next decade, decade and a half, China is going to be the economy of economies. And there's never been another empire that's got gone down in history without a fight. This is what you're leaving. It all started with 9-11. People believed it. So many still believe the same story about 18 people with box cutters, how they got around and out, out, out manipulated the best or supposedly the best air force in the world. Uh, the high school, Columbine High School, my God, just look at the name of the high school. Where's the bodies? I keep asking the questions. What about all the shootings in Orlando? On and on and on. It's all these talking heads, these overpaid talking heads that lead the ignorant in one direction, only to swish the herd in the opposite to break open their new point. The new point is, mark our words from the mentors. The new point is there is going to be friction with China. And remember, China, Russia, South Africa, start adding up the BRICS nations because none of them are on your side. This is going to be a war that this, oh my God, you're going to have the masked people fighting the unmasked people. We're doing three or four videos today because I have the time until the plane flights start. Once they start again and the clients start coming back, the ones we had to delay and the new ones that are booking because they're, they're seeing what we're saying is making perfect sense. And countries and farmland like where we're out, many countries like us are going to favor the crunch a lot better. There's no question on that, but we're not pushing it. But when the flights do start opening again. Old Barry and DR is going to be busy running around. So while I do it, uh, it's, it's, and people that are asking me why they're appreciating it, but they're asking why. And I, I told you, I believe that information that's not shared, accurate information that's not shared is wasted. And this is just something that, um, Humanity is, is really, really, really corkscrewing in a negative direction. And uh, I'll be doing a few more today. Um, my God, you just, um, what's going to come out later today, it's just sad. But 
you know, maybe there's some truth to it. I mean, I'll do a video one day if time permits, but maybe there's some truth to it that, I mean, we are the only ones with with a, a an actual fused DNA on the second strand, and something's fishy somewhere. There's no other animal. There's nothing, no other creation on this planet that just goes and 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 purposely tries to hurt its own species, other than humanity. There is definitely something dead wrong about that. We're not talking about like animals or bears or because, you know, coming from Canada, I used to do a fair bit of hunting, but we're not talking fox. We're not talking anything that will protect its young. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there ain't no other species on this planet that will willfully, spitefully for its own financial gain or a few extra berries in the case of the wild that will do that to its own species, only us. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, it's old berry. Take it for what it's worth, but things are getting awful ugly, awful ugly, and you better start preparing for it. Bye.